Hi everybody, welcome to Simple Art at Home with me, Laura Houston. Uh, this is the episode that's geared towards pre-kindergarten, transitional kindergarten, and kindergarten. Uh, but you can be any age to enjoy this show. Uh, before we get started, I want to give a huge congratulations to two of our very special students who were declared winners of the Anaheim Public Utilities uh, Mask Design Contest. We have Yoltsin, a fourth grader from Edison, um, his mask design won, and also Frida, a fifth grader from Orange Grove Elementary. Uh, if you'd like to see their designs, you can go on the Anaheim Elementary website to check them out. Before we start our show, I'd like to share with you some fabulous student art that all of you sent in to me. Let's take a look. I just love seeing student artwork. Um, I keep my email um, right down there at the bottom of the screen. Um, I'd love to see what you do. So send it in to me and I will try to show it and share it with everyone. Today's art project is going to be in the style of Mexican folk art. And as I said before, this is geared towards early beginners and you will need a piece of paper, a pencil, a dark crayon or a black pen, something to trace with, um, and you'll need something to color with, and you're going to need sunlight from a window. So let's go ahead over to the table and get started. So for this early beginner project, I wanted to practice with you on drawing hearts before we start. So you'll just want a piece of scratch paper, and we're going to practice with hearts. And hearts, I actually use a darker pen so it shows up better for you. With hearts, you have a curve like this that goes to, to the middle, and then you try to do the same thing on the other side. Hearts are not as easy as they look. They're pretty complicated shapes to draw. It's hard to get them symmetrical. So you might have to practice quite a bit before your hearts start looking like hearts. Um, I want to also show you another technique that you can use. Uh, let me first cut this part off. If you've ever made Valentine's before, there's a method of folding a piece of paper in half, like this, so it, it opens like a little book. And on the outside, on the edge where it's folded, you can draw one side of the heart, just one side. And um, hearts are symmetrical. So what happens is you're not going to need scissors today. I'm just, I'm just showing you something. You're not going to cut anything out. But if I cut with my scissors, what do you think this is going to look like when I open up my paper? Do you think I'm going to have two halves of a heart or do you think I will have one whole heart? If you guessed one whole heart, you were right. Here's the negative shape right here. Uh, the technique that we're using today, we will be working with symmetry and we will fold a paper in half. Um, parents, while I'm using scissors, I just got these out to show you, especially if you are pre-kindergarten, transitional kindergarten or kindergartner uh, age students. It's helpful to have a smaller scissors for their smaller hands. And I don't know if you notice, but so I am left-handed, but I've always cut with scissors with my right hand. And so if you have 
a child who is left-handed, you know, just let them choose whichever hand feels most comfortable when it comes to cutting. And also just a note too, they do sell left-handed scissors, but I tried these out today. These are from Target and these work perfectly fine in left hands or right hands. So um, some scissors aren't, it's just, you know, good to know. Anyway, uh, back to our hearts. You're gonna have to practice hearts in order to get um, good at them. But we are going to start with a piece of paper. My paper happens to be square. Yours doesn't have to be. It can be rectangular. We're going to fold it in half and I'm going to try to make sure that my corners are lined up and I'm just going to push my finger along the edge on that fold to get a nice crisp fold. And now, just like we did before with the half of the heart, I'm going to draw half of a heart. I'm going to leave space up here and I'm going to leave space down here at the bottom. So here I go, just gonna go up and down. And that's all I'm going to do, I'm drawing half of a heart. Now I said before that we are going to create some art that's in the style of Mexican folk art. And this drawing that we're doing today is going to be all symmetrical. That means that it's a mirror image. One side is a mirror image of the other. So we're going to draw some simple shapes only on this side of the paper. We're going to put a flower right here. So I'm gonna start with a circle for the center of the flower, and then I'm going to draw some petals. So do your best. It does not have to look just like mine. Just any kind of flower up here. I'm gonna keep going all the way around until I fill up all of this space. Okay, and remember, you can pause this video at any time. Let's put some little dots inside of our flower. And then we can also, I'm gonna get a thinner pen. We can also add some decorative lines. You don't have to do this. If this is too confusing, just draw. You know, keep your flower simple. Just doing that to add some decoration. So we have half of a heart and a whole flower. Now, along this side, I'm going to draw a line that goes from here down to here. It's going to turn into a vine, but at first, here we go, it's just going all the way down and stop. Just like that. I just started here and went all the way down. Now I'm gonna put a leaf at the top. Look at that, it's just a leafy shape. You can do it however you want. And I'm gonna draw some more leaves on this. They're just simple, leafy shapes. You can make your leaves any way that you want to. There's no right or wrong way. I'm just adding leaves. And I'm gonna do one more here. And I think I will add just a little center line for a little more decoration. Okay, now if this is enough for you, you can stop right here, but if you wanna keep going with me, if you wanna add a few more designs, you can. I'm going to add another half of a flower. Now this is gonna be a challenge, so it's up to you if you wanna go for this or not. I'm gonna put half of a circle because that's going to be the center of the flower, and then I'm going to put half of a petal because I know the other half is going to show up on the other side of the paper. So I'm going something like this. This is up to you if you wanna do this. My, this flower is gonna be more open and apart. I'll put a few little dots in the center and I'll put a couple lines here. There we go. Now, let me show you what this looks like when I open it up. We have completed um, half. I'm going to do one more thing. I almost forgot. I'm going to draw a little decorative twig that kind of comes out from here and goes up like this. And we'll put some little circles on it. Those circles could be like little berries or something. I'll do one more. And if you want to, 
you could put a little dot inside the circle. Okay, now I've finished and you can add more if you want to. These are just my suggestions. So for the next part, we're going to use a window. We're going to use sunlight from a window to trace the same pattern on this side. So let's take a look and see how that goes. So now I'm standing here by my sliding glass door by the window and I'm going to use the light to help me trace through the paper because if I just put the paper on my desk, I can't see through it. But notice how the sunlight shines through so I can see what I've done. So I'm gonna start with the heart and I'm going to just carefully trace along the line. There, so let's see what happens, what this looks like. See, all of a sudden I have a complete heart. I'm gonna keep going. So see this flower right here? Now I'm going to trace the flower. We are making a symmetrical design. And symmetrical means that it's a mirror image. You're going to learn about symmetry in math when you get a little bit older. I'll add the details on the flower later. Now let's trace this vine right here, this leafy vine. I'm gonna start with the line. I'm just going to drag right on top of the line. I'm being very careful to put my black pen right on top of the black line that I see. And now I will trace the leaves. I think I can put the little dots there. And this, the smaller leaves. And here we have another leaf. Think about all the fun activities you can do with art using this method. You can make some pretty interesting designs. It works best if it's daytime. You won't be able to do this if it's dark outside because you need the natural sunlight to help you see through the paper. So I'm gonna take this down a little bit long. Let's look at this. So, so far we have the vine on both sides. Now I'm just going to finish with this down here. It's like a, the other half of the flower and this uh, design. I'm being very careful and I'm going slowly and like I said, you can go back and add little details later. I'm mostly uh, wanting to get the placement of, of all these little designs. Right now I'm drawing circles. These could be very simplified berries of some sort, maybe a berry design. Oops. Okay, well let's see how it looks. There we go, we're almost ready to add colors. Okay, so I'm just going to continue to add some dots and details in here and add some on the flower. If there's, at this point, if there's anything special that you want to add in, you can. Um, this style of Mexican folk art, this design that we are doing is typically symmetrical, meaning you want both sides to be a mirror image. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stick with that pattern. And now I'm ready to color. I'm gonna start with the heart in the center and I'm going to color it red. And Typically, Mexican folk art has vibrant, bright colors that are very happy and almost like celebratory, like celebrations. And every country, just about every country in the world has their own version of folk art. And what folk art is, it's usually a handmade item that's made with traditional methods. And generally, the artist um, is somebody who was not formally trained, like they didn't go to an art school for 
formal education, but either, you know, somebody, you know, they just watched and, and made it up themselves, or they learned from a, a parent or an, you know, an ancestor, just passed down that way. And folk art can be used, um, oftentimes it's just used within the community, but again, sometimes it's used as a source of income. So whatever the item is, it can be sold for money. Okay, so here we have our heart. I just did a rough coloring of a heart. And now let's, let's add some green to these leaves. I think I will start up at the top up here with a bright green on the leaves. You can color this any color that you want. There we go. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Although you don't have to, like I said, you can, this is your artwork. Sometimes you can find folk art on, you know, it's not just paintings or drawings. Sometimes it can be on textiles, like on clothing, this art could be found woven, you know, into rugs. Sometimes it's on pottery or tiles. Uh, the common theme is you'll see uh, either birds, flowers, the sun. Oftentimes it's nature, like landscapes. Sometimes the folk art has to do with um, religion. So I'm just coloring this in. I'm I'm trying to use very bright colors. If you're in kindergarten, you may have already learned about symmetry in math and shapes. Certain shapes have symmetry. Just like we did when we were cutting out the heart, when you fold it in half, um, it's it fits exactly. The folds are exactly the same, and we call that uh, symmetrical. I'm going to add a few more colors to this green. Maybe I'll add some more colors in here. Uh, folk art typically looks flat. It's not three-dimensional. It's usually very flat. And as I said, it could be on uh, pottery, tiles, even wood carvings you may have seen. I have an episode on alebrijes, which, is, which are also a form of folk art. All right, let's move on to our flowers. I think I will make the center of these flowers like a bright gold. And I'll do the same thing with this guy down here to tie them all in together. And I think I'm gonna make the petals different colors. Doesn't that sound like fun? Put some pink. And these I'm gonna, I'm not gonna use a pattern. I'm just going to use whatever pretty colors I like and just see how they look together. As I said before, folk art is usually um, like happy, gives off that happy feeling. Why don't we use one of some other colors? How about orange? I haven't used orange yet. We could put an orange petal in there. Put it over here. Oh, maybe I'll use orange on these little these little berries. Those are cute. And oh, how about this nice blue? We'll add some blue, a blue petal in here. And maybe even a darker blue. And how about a nice green. Well, no, I'm not going to use green on the flowers because I have so much green here. I just changed my mind. Why don't I use... We can use... Let's see, it's next to purple. Why don't we use like a, a golden... This golden orange color. It's okay to 
you know, take your time, think about what it is you want to color. There we go. And I'll add colors to these. If you enjoyed learning about folk art, uh, if you go online, there is the Museum of International Folk Art. You can check out their website. It's just the, in, the Museum of International Folk Art. And you can see examples from different you know, countries all over the world. And put some light blue in it. Again, you can use any colors that you want, colors that make you happy. There we go. And then I didn't color in the background, um, but you can, you know, maybe, no, okay. So you could just, you know, sketch a few, you know, colors in the background, or you can start on colored paper. So here is our finished product. I think I wanna just clean up a little bit around the heart here, just to kind of even out those edges a little bit. Remember, you can use um, you can use crayons, you can use watercolors, marking pens, anything that you have. I'm using oil pastels. Um, the box looks like this. These are oil pastels. Okay, so I think I will meet you back up at the easel. So this is. Our art inspired by Mexican folk art. I hope you enjoyed this lesson today and I will be back next Thursday and let's take a look at some fabulous student art before I go. Bye!